Daily Devotion with Pastor Bala for November 24th, 2023, from Revelation chapter 20, the first resurrection. Previously, we heard about an angel coming from heaven with God's authority, and this angel also had a key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. The angel bound Satan with this chain for a thousand years, and then we heard that Satan was released, but still under the authority of God. The release of Satan was to remind us that through many trials and tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. So let's continue with John's Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. Also, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image, and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Remember, the revelation of John is filled with a lot of symbolic language. So let's start with those thrones and those who had authority to judge. So who is sitting on those thrones? Well, only God knows. Consider this. When the mother of the sons of Zebedee asked Jesus to grant that her sons would sit on the left and right hand of Jesus when he came into his kingdom, Jesus had the following response for her. From Matthew chapter 20, verse 23, he said to them, You will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand or at, and at my left is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it had been prepared by my Father. Yes, only God the Father knows who's sitting where and who's sitting on those thrones. But like the mother, we also may be very curious and maybe even a little envious thinking, could I be sitting on one of those thrones? Now we need to hear the words of the psalmist because the psalmist reminds us in Psalm chapter 84, verse 10. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. So let's not worry about where we're going to sit in God's kingdom. Let's be better be concerned about remaining faithful to God so that we will be in God's kingdom. Now, the other issue that this verse brings to us in John's vision is the resurrection of the martyrs. There is only one bodily resurrection from the dead. So what is the symbolic meaning, meaning of the martyrs rising from the dead? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of options. As Jesus died on the cross, a few things happened. The temple curtain was torn in two. There was an earthquake. Stones were split. And let's bring in the account from Matthew chapter 27, verse 52. The tombs also were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Now, there's another option, which would be in connection with regeneration through holy baptism. As St. Paul writes to Titus in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Remember, these are symbolic images to give us comfort during our earthly life. And as Christians, we realize that through Jesus Christ, we have life and we have that life for eternity. Death is defeated. Jesus 
is the only life. God's peace and many blessings be with you. And thank you for listening. And please take an opportunity to share this message with others. If you have enjoyed these daily devotions, please consider making a donation to Peace Lutheran Church, 24024 West Main Street, Plainfield, Illinois, 60544. Thank you again for listening.